it's not that much mass. Delta bot, but there are many other Delta bots also. It's more like the class, the design with the push rods is called a Delta printer. Yeah. And so I'm the guy who came up with this, but this one's called Kossel, K O S S E L. You could write that on the back or just, just remember it. There, there are lots of other 3D printers now. I, um, I, I mean, other 3D Delta printers. Lots of companies have started up last year or so on Kickstarter. So you guys came up with the Delta printer? I did. You did? Oh! Well, I'm not entirely. So there were, there were prototypes before. I made the first one that printed. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Well, congratulations. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also. Your name is? Johan. Johan Rochholz? Oh, I oh, I'm German. Of course. German. Seattle, Washington. What does Kossel mean? It's the name of the biologist. He got a Nobel Prize, I think, for isolating the amino acids that make DNA. And he's, he's from Rostock, where I'm also born. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yep. So he is um, he's like the first And you don't have to move the head and parts around. You don't have to move the brain surface like this. You don't have to move the external motor like this. The moving parts are very lightweight. So you get better accuracy even at high speed. Even at high speed. So these are generally faster than the others? Well, so it depends. The bottleneck is usually how fast you can melt the plastic and still get a reliable, smooth right. extrusion. Mm -hmm. So you can't really actually go that much faster. Like you can get better precision at the same speed. Yeah, it is really um, clean, right? Yeah. It's really thin. And how do you get this surface? So the bottom surface is directly on the glass. Oh. And the glass is very smooth and it makes the object also smooth. I see. Interesting. The glass is smooth and it makes the object smooth. But there's no heated vest? Correct. It's just glass. You don't need it? But the PLA works reasonably well for the first two layers anyway. Uh -huh. Since we're only printing flat objects. Right, okay. And we clean the glass so that there are no fingerprints on it. Oh, so that makes Fingerprints are oily and they make the friction, like they reduce the stickiness, right? But if you clean it, then it's okay. And what about acrylic? Uh, acrylic surfaces end up not being very flat, unfortunately. Glass is like float glass, it's very, very, very flat. But the acrylic will sort of warp over time, especially when it's heated, right? You, you, you squirt melted plastic on it, so the center will be warmer than the rest, and then it starts warping. I don't like acrylic so much. But some of them do use acrylic. I know, but I don't think it's the right choice. But in general, we can't we do that. Yeah. Right? First two layers. It's like a circus trick. First two layers, you should get away with that tape as well. But after that, do the tape. Do so I need to replace my glass, my uh, acrylic uh, bed with a glass piece? So that, and cover it with tape. Because the tape will keep it onto the um, onto the glass and won't pop off. But then the acrylic won't melt into um, into the PLA model or whatever. It was auto leveling. It was a self calibrating routine. Oh, it levels this? Yeah. So it finds the position of the print surface oh, so that you know the right height for the first layer. Otherwise, if it's too too high, it won't stick. And if it's too low, then 
and won't be able to extrude any plastic. And if the um, print surface isn't quite level, it will it adjust for that? It will, it will compensate, right. So in this case, actually, you can see on the screen the matrix of the millimeter values of, of the height of each point. And click, 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 click. Each point has a millimeter height. And it's not exactly the same. And it's, it goes from 1.1 to 3.1 millimeters. And that's okay. It can compensate for that. Nice. What kind of software do you use for the printing? So, there's firmware on here that does most of the hard work. Uh -huh. Then there's a bunch of software on the computer that sends the G code over the USB cable. Okay. And I usually use Printerface. What is it? Printerface, like printer interface. I see. It's called Printerface. Printerface, okay. The thing that I have here is the command line version of the Printerface. Oh, okay, because you're the expert user. I'm a geek, that's why. There you go. Thank you.